guys. Welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but there exists a genre in video games called the first person shooter. It's barely ever mentioned, so I'm surprised if you haven't. And if you can't sense the sarcasm in my voice at this point, better get yourself checked because clearly you have issues. So today, we'll be making a basic FPS effect using a GoPro camera and this sweet chesty man. We'll be shooting the bulk of the effect in camera and then comping in our bullet hits and blood hits and all that sort of stuff in post. I didn't have any people for enemies, so I've just set up a few props. A plush Mario, a Goku standy, and a door. Man, I wish I had some friends nearby. You also need some muscle flushes, blood hits, and some bullet hits. Once again, I recommend Video Copilot's Action Essentials 2 for all of these, but if you can find them for free, use them. Now I put this effect together in about 20 minutes because it's really that easy. You'll also have to excuse the very crappy gun because, you know, Australia, gun laws. So let's get the shot done. Okay, so we'll be controlling the GoPro through its wireless app that I've just got for the iPad. This gives you a good idea of what you're actually shooting through the camera if you don't have a monitor. So you can just select connect and control then you'll actually get a live, well, a two second delay preview through what's going on through your camera. So if I bring that up all the way. The only downfall is that once you actually set to record, you're no longer going to get that preview, which is a shame, but is what it is. So all I'm gonna do is hit record, and you'll see it's gone. So, here we go. Just gonna go to first target. And then over to the second target. This isn't the final shot, by the way. I'm just gonna be giving you a demo. And last shot. Okay, so that's how we get our shot. Okay, now that our shot's done, let's add our magic in After Effects. Okay, so our first step is gonna be getting rid of that ugly fisheye look. In order to do this, we'll head over to presets and type in optic to bring up optical compensation. We'll then check reverse lens distortion and crank our field of view to around 60 points. There, that looks a lot better. You'll find it cuts off the frame a little, but you can play with the position controls in your comp to hone your framing if you like. From there, we'll duplicate our footage and it's time to do some masking at the point of our gunshots. We'll mask around the barrel of the gun and if you're like me, you'll draw a second mask around that little circle thingy too. Make sure you set this mask to subtract in the mask settings or it won't do anything. We'll then drop down our mask settings and hit the stopwatch on mask path, going frame by frame through the gunshot until the weapon is still again. The reason we're doing this is for the next step, adding the muzzle flash, as we need the flash to be in front of the weapon. Here's the muzzle flash I'm using. It's called Automatic Fire 04 from Action Essentials 2. Let's drag and drop that into our timeline. We'll then line it up with the timing of our first shot. Next, move it into place and scale it up or down if need be. I'm changing the transfer mode to add since the GoPro really blows out lights. I've also trimmed down the amount of flashes to the amount of shots I fired. I'll head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and add a CC Radial Fast Blur to the flash to better blend it in with the GoPro's resolution. I crank mine up to around about 65 in this shot. From there, drop down the position controls and hit the stopwatch as we need to marry the position of the muzzle flashes to the end of our barrel. So now that our first target's done, rinse and repeat this process for the other two shots as seen in this sped up montage. Okay, flashes are done. Let's move on to bullet casings. We'll be using the 8mm 01 casing animation for Action Essentials 2 here, but any still of a bullet will work here. We'll drag and drop it into our shot, scrubbing forward until the first muzzle flash. From there, we'll scale it and position it into place. Next, we'll hit P to bring up the position controls, hit the stopwatch, and over the next few frames, we'll animate the casing in an arc going off screen. Make sure motion blur is turned on, and let's check out a preview. Once your initial animation's done, you can duplicate that footage, marry it up with the next muzzle flash, and you'll only have to change the first position of the casing just to make sure they're all ejecting from the same area. Once again, when you finish that shot, rinse and repeat for any other shots you have like so. Man, I fired a lot of bullets in that last shot. 
Next step is adding some light fall off from the flashes. Super easy. For this, we'll head up and add a new adjustment layer. Trim the excess using the old Control Shift D, and then head over to Effect, Color Correction, and add a brightness and contrast. We'll then crank that brightness up about 50 points. We'll then draw a rough mask around the weapon and hand and proceed to feather the hell out of it. At least 70 pixels. We'll then hit T and hit the stopwatch on opacity, going frame by frame, turning the opacity to 100% when the flash is on screen, and down to zero when the muzzle flashes off screen. Like so. When you're done, it should look like this. Once more, repeat the process for the next two shots. If you notice your weapon is changing perspective too much shot to shot, just collapse down the mask settings, hit the stopwatch on mask path, and edit the shape of your mask like I'm doing in both subsequent shots. Okie dokie, last step I promise. It's time to add some damage to our scene, like, you know, cause bullets gotta hit something, right? For this shot here, all I did was add two elements, a still of a bullet hole, and this wall hit shot from Action Essentials. So here's how we do it. Scrub forward to just before our shooting takes place and click on our bottom most clip. That's our main background plate. Head over to Tracker and click Track Motion. Then find a good track point on our target and hit the play button. Only tracking to the point in which our target moves off screen. We'll then add a null and then head back and edit our target to that null. Hit apply and OK. Since I already have my bullet hole color corrected and ready to go from that last shot, I'll just duplicate it, line it up with our first muzzle flash, parent it to our new null, and use the position controls to, you know, put it into position. Next, since we don't have a perfect track, we're gonna trim the bullet footage and hide the end of it by having the gun barrel move over it. To do this, just scrub forward to the point where they meet and trim the bullet hole at that point. As you can see from the preview, it works pretty good. Once you're done with the bullet hole animation, make sure you put it under the muzzle flash. We'll then repeat that process by duplicating the bullet hole once more, and once again, making sure that the barrel passes over it to hide the cut. For the final shot of Mario getting pumped full of lead, all I did was add a bunch of couch hits from Action Essentials together in a pre-comp and use the same principles as the holes, resulting in this sweet carnage. Add all those steps together and you'll get something like this. So that's a pretty quick and dirty FPS effect, but for something done on the fly, it works pretty well. Tune in later in the week and we'll cover a more advanced FPS effect, but in the meantime, have a crack at this one and send me a link of your work. So what would you like to see next? You can let me know in the comments or on my Twitter. If you're new here, my subscribe button, like my puppy dog, loves attention, as does those like and share buttons. And as always, my friends, keep learning. It's a serious show.